The Galaxy Z Flip 5 is a super fun phone to use, and with how comfortable it is to bring along with you, you'll start to notice yourself taking more photos and more videos. This will make a lot more sense the longer you watch this video, so buckle up. And I must tell you guys that Samsung is still doing insane promotions for this phone. You can get up to $600 of trade-in, and you also get 30% off Samsung Care Plus, so I'm gonna have links down below for you guys to check out. So if you guys are interested in this phone, now you know where to go. So obviously now that the cover display is bigger than the year before, you have these interactive widgets they can play around with and get more glanceable information without actually having to open the phone. Now the annoying part is, is that not all apps work on the cover display. Samsung did add the labs feature which you can enable and you can, you know, run things like Netflix on the cover display, which kind of makes no sense. I just don't see why anyone would want to watch uh, a movie on a three inch display or even a TV show for that matter, when you can literally just open the phone up and just watch it on a much bigger landscape kind of format. So I don't know why Samsung added Netflix, but not like other apps that would actually be helpful on the cover display. For example, messaging apps like uh, Telegram. Now Telegram does work on the cover display, but sometimes uh, it, it messes up and it glitches out and it's just not really a good experience for, you know, spending a thousand dollars on a phone. For a quick example, here's how speed test looks like on the cover display. I mean, you can automatically tell that it just does not belong there. I just find it annoying that Samsung finally added something that we've all been asking for, a bigger cover display, but they still limit what you can do on it when other phones like the Moto Razr Plus, you can literally run any app you want on the cover display and it actually looks decent. Battery life is also something that really impressed me with the Z Flip 5. I'm getting around six hours of screen on time, which is insanely good for a flip phone that is this thin. Not only that, but the battery capacity is only 3,700 milliamp hours. So the fact that it's even getting six hours of screen on time, that's really good. That's, that, that beats out some phones that don't even fold. But not only does this phone last a good amount of time, but it also does not get hot. And that, of course, is thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy chipset, which is super power efficient, and that means less heat. I mean, I, I can be fast charging this phone in my car in the North Carolina sun, and it just does not get hot. That is super impressive. Now, when it comes to charging the Z Flip 5, it's not bad. It's about 25 watts of charging, which is fine since the battery capacity is pretty small, but still Samsung does limit how fast it can actually charge that 3,700 milliamp hour battery. So you, you can expect around from zero to 50% in around 35 minutes. Now, if you're looking uh, at a full charge, unfortunately that does take quite a long time, around an hour and 20, an hour and 15 minutes, uh, sometimes more depending on how many notifications you're getting, how often the screen's lighting up, so on and so forth. So for the next iteration of folding phones from Samsung, uh, I definitely wish we have some sort of fast charging option, like a real fast charging option. Now, in the beginning of the video, I did mention how fun this phone is to use, and you'll find yourself taking photos and videos even in places where you don't even need to be doing that, but that's simply because of how fun and easy it is to use, seriously. All you gotta do is swipe up on this little camera icon like this, or you click the power button twice to activate the cameras. Now, obviously, when you do that, you're using the better rear cameras instead of using the front-facing camera, which is never really as good as the rear cameras. So not only can you take great looking selfies without worrying about quality loss, but you can also take videos using this method as well, which means this phone can basically replace a vlogging camera that you may have, and best of all, it's a square that fits into your pocket. Or, ladies, it'll fit into your purse. Or, ladies, I know how, it's, how annoying it is for you to find jeans that have big pockets, yeah, well, you don't got to worry about it with this phone. This phone will fit basically into any pocket that you have. Now, in my opinion, the cool thing is that the photos and videos are orientation based. So if you take a selfie with the, you know, holding the phone like this, your selfies are going to look like this. But if you turn the phone this way and you take a photo or video, your photos or videos are going to be landscape. So it also depends on how you're holding the phone. So that I think that's pretty smart. I, I mean, I really like that. So if you want to take a quick Instagram story, hold the phone like this. If you want to take a YouTube video 16 by 9 aspect ratio, hold the phone like this. I like it. Photos on the Z Flip 5 look really good, and I think most people will be happy with the results. HDR looks fantastic, even managing to beat some really tricky scenarios, and sharpness all around has been improved over the Z Flip 4, especially toward the edges of the photos. 
For a flip phone, this phone takes incredible looking photos and it can even compete with a lot of phones that don't fold. Now, you know, some might say that the Moto Razr uh, Plus is the better phone because of that more usable cover display, but what they don't mention is that the photos and videos coming from the Moto Plus, the, the Razr Plus, um, are not that good. Uh, they are very shaky, uh, HDR looks very bad, and overall just uh, the, the color is very odd. So it just, it just kind of depends on what you're looking for in a phone. If you want the phone that takes better photos and better videos, this is the phone to get. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. Overall, I really like the Z Flip 5. I think it's a pretty large improvement over the Z Flip 4, again, because of that cover display, but also because of the hinge. It's just, it, it's, it feels refined. It feels like a polish over the, over the Flip 4 from last year. So obviously the hinge now folds flat. And also opening and closing the phone feels easier than the Flip 4. It's just, there's not a lot of resistance, but it's still good enough to where you can kind of put the phone into any position you want, which is also pretty good for taking like selfies or group photos. You don't really need to bring a tripod with you. You just set the phone down on a table, angle it towards, you know, your group of friends. You can easily take a photo. So I really like this phone, how compact it is, how versatile it is. It's just, it's fun and unique. And I kind of, I kind of miss that from like the normal rectangle phones that we know and love, I guess. Do we even still love them anymore? It seems like they're the same phones every single year. So I, I appreciate Samsung for trying something new and for finally adding that bigger display. So if you found this video to be useful, entertaining, or maybe you're just bored and you're watching this, I would appreciate you guys leaving me a thumbs up. It's absolutely free to you, but it helps me and the channel out a lot, and I always truly appreciate it. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. This was Mark from Markstack. Adios.